Corpos, dead. Three, two, one, go. Wow, this new Star Wars Outlaws game looks pretty great. That's pretty good. You know well. what? Let's check out the official website and see if we can learn more about the. Good Lord, what is happening in there? Pre-order. Pre Get three days early access. Pre-order. You want I can't stand pre-orders, man. Three day early access. I had to buy that to stream Diablo. Yeah. Pre-order the season's pass and get three days early access. Pre-order. Whoa. Four, four pre-orders on one screen. Extend K's journey with two upcoming DLCs. You want to play the exclusive Jabba's fuckhouse? <laughs> pre-order. <laughs> Unlock exclusive cosmetic. Pre-order. Are you fucking pre-ordering yet? Pre-order you know now. If you go to the Arrowhead Games website and just, just look at it. There's something special about an Arrowhead game. Games should challenge the creativity of the individuals who play them. We wow. want our games to help forge friendships. And look at- Oh, that is such a sweet thing to that, say. Not even an advertisement for the Super Citizen Edition. Hmm, I think this is a great way to illustrate what AAA gaming has become and what indie gaming has evolved into. The difference in priorities Friendship. is clear. And you might assume, Act Man, that's just typical Ubisoft greed and shenanigans. Poopysoft? I think the first thing I ever saw that was super egregious from Poopysoft was Assassin's Creed Battle Pass. That blew my mind. I think it came out in like 2012, I think? It was one of the first ones. But that ever wrong. did it anyway. It's worse than that. What Ubisoft is doing with Star Wars Outlaws is symptomatic of a much greater issue plaguing all of AAA gaming. Recently, Ubisoft dropped a story trailer for Outlaws. I watched it, and I felt apathy. As you know, Damn. apathy is death. The gameplay reveal for Outlaws looked solid, but now I'm skeptical. Maybe it was the boring writing, the generic presentation, or the fact that they're directing people towards the $120 version of the game. $120 to play a video game. They really are squeezing your balls dry for this one. $120 American. Not your country's currency, American. Instead of the standard version. Hello. Yeah. I like money. Still, money. I don't remember the last time I felt indifferent to a new Star Wars game. On the flip side, one of my buddies sent me a trailer for a game called Kingmakers. I've never heard of this franchise heard nor of the studio behind it, but let's check it out. What the fuck <laughs> is this? Oh my god! There's yep. a fucking Chevy truck in the Oh, we're giving shotguns? How can the engine handle this many guys on screen? This is like Mountain Blade plus Dynasty Warriors with time travel? Yeah. Oh, grenades? Oh my Sh god, and they have Chivalry. RTS mechanics? No shot, no shot. It can't get any crazy. And helicopters? Who? Helicopter. Here's the question of the day. What? Carpet bombing! <laughs> Medieval men in armor. I, as a huge Star Wars fan, am I more excited for this and not this? Well, the answer is obvious. It's Ubisoft. But like I said, AAA Ubisoft. gaming has been in decline for some them. time. Meanwhile, indie games have become a spawning pool for creativity and imagination. You may have seen the plethora of AAA gaming is dead videos yeah. spring up on YouTube. Well, AAA gaming didn't just die. It was murdered. If you got that reference, welcome back to 2017 YouTube. Clearly, I it was murdered. Where's that reference from? It sounded familiar. Really cringe, but no, I don't remember. Where did where was it from? <laughs> CSI. Oh, uh, yeah, that yeah 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 yeah. Okay, now I remember. Yep 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 yep. The way where he's yelling and like, like it goes off into the sunset. Okay. I'm not the only one who has felt yeah! disillusioned and apathetic towards recent AAA titles. But a lot of people focus on how AAA games have gotten worse. They highlight the obvious, excessive monetization, unfinished products being released. I can't masturbate to this character. And while these are all <laughs> issues worth pointing out, we- I mean, if you're gonna pay $120 for a game, you should be able to do that, no? You need to understand why these things are happening. The bigger picture. 
You see, the reality is uh, AAA games music. have become far too safe, formulaic, predictable, and just unexciting. Perhaps it's because you're an old jaded nerd, Act Man. No, no, that couldn't possibly be it. Am I so out of touch? No, it's the children who are wrong. That's no, they, they, it is not you. Gaming has changed. Nerds don't make games anymore. Normies took over. Yeah, no, like, I know it's it's maybe just saying, like, say, Ree, normies, get out. It's it's true. They have a point. They really do. We're going to explore today. Yeah, the suits my games now. They give money for, the rise for of games. Indie. Why has AAA gaming gotten so bad? Now, first off, what the fuck does AAA actually mean? The Advanced Aardvark Association? Because I'd love to join that club. No, instead you should join you. my public Discord server, the Act Clan. Links in the pinned comment and in the little card up I'm here. I'm in the chat. The acronym originally Are you referred in it? to large budget, high profile games developed by reputable studios released by major publishers. You know, Halo, Call of Duty, Warcraft, The Witcher, 50 Cent Bulletproof, Cory in the House. <laughs> Ga <laughs> games that would shake the very foundation of the world. AAA games typically have large teams, expensive marketing campaigns, and copious amounts of funding. The term was taken from the credit industry and applied to gaming once the severely obese corporate fat cats realized video games weren't a joke of a business and could actually make more money than Hollywood. They make a lot of For money. For business moguls, AAA meant this is the safest investment you can make to get a return. That's not the case anymore. Today, AAA- I also think that there's money laundering in video games now. When uh, when games fail, uh, they do massive tax write-offs. I'm not even joking. I don't know if it's a conspiracy or if it's a valid thing to believe, but I actually th unironically think that. It makes no sense to me when people publish games like that Kong game that came out this year, or last year, I forget. And it's just a piece of garbage, and it costs $30. Like, it has to be. There's no way mostly indicates the aspirations and cost of a game that's odd it sounds like a conspiracy i i don't think so man it's either it's a write-off or it's money laundering i i don't i genuinely think it, it must be or the day before not how safe an investment it is from the 80s to the 2000s, there weren't many games that were commercial failures. It was mostly like failed consoles. And that's a good video yeah. to watch. But since the 2010s, as AAA gaming budgets have grown exponentially, we've seen some big ass flops. Marvel's Avengers, Suicide Squad, Anthem, Redfall, Aliens, Colonial Marines. Mm. And in the last seven or so years, it also- I didn't even hear about Aliens, Colonial Marines. <laughs> The day before was a scam. I think it was a lot of things. It was bad and it costed a hundred. Like the, the stats they gave for that game and how much it cost to make. I don't know. Or what was it? That Walking Dead mobile game as well. Yeah, that was not. They said they put in like 80 million dollars into that game or something. It wasn't a mobile game. Oh my god, it was a PC game. Oh. Yeah, sorry. I, I watched so much of this crap. I just don't remember. <laughs> it seems like many popular franchises have released what fans consider to be the worst entry in said franchise. Fallout 76, Battlefield 2042, Mass Effect Andromeda. And Fallout 76, I know for sure it was not... I wouldn't say it was a scam, it was just really badly done. Because it's still alive now for some reason. People really love that game. Maybe this is all just a coincidence. But as one trained in the Force, you know that true coincidences are rare. So what hmm. gives? Why have things changed? Well, one of the driving factors behind the decline of AAA games is they've gotten- and Only because of the show? Uh, no, there was still a really loyal fan base that's been playing it for a while. It's very surprising, even before the show. Too big. The pants do not fit anymore. For reference, Vanilla World of Warcraft was made by a team of about 40 people. Helldivers mm -hmm. 2 was made by a team of 100. Over 9,000 people contributed to Diablo 4. That just blows my mind. 2,600, 400 people worked on the game's sound design and 902 art rolls. So there's seven, 
There's 6,000 people that worked on it that weren't even art and sound design. Can you just grasp what how, how bad that is to work with? 9,000 people total. 2,500 people that don't care about Diablo. I'm sure there's people that care about it, but like, that is insane. And you have to pay them all. And, and, and getting work done, anything, like corporate meetings about this game. I bet you half of these people didn't even play the game at launch. I bet you a hundred bucks. What, 9,000? Starfield. Seven years in development. Seven years, yeah, right. 200 million dollar budget. 1,700 planets to explore. Uh, Todd, you think maybe we could tone that number of planets down to like 30? Or maybe 10? 10 really good planets? The gamers decide <laughs> 1,700 planets. AAA games have wow. exploded in size, scope, and cost to an unprecedented level. On one hand, a larger team has the potential to create something truly incredible, revolutionary, to realize their greatest ambitions. God, but this relies so on having a cohesive vision amongst many people and the budget and resources to make it happen. However, the more ambitious a project, the more money invested into it, the riskier it becomes. Immortals of Avium, a game you probably never heard of, was the debut title for Ascendant Studios. And for some inexplicable reason, the game was given a budget of 125 million smackaroos. Make oh my god. Oh. And they didn't even recoup that. You spent 125 million dollars on a video game and you didn't even get it back. Not laundering? Yeah, it's not laundering, chat. It's not laundering, for sure. It's a conspiracy. <laughs> Making it one of the most expensive video games ever made. What the- Their first game, by the way. Their first game! Fuck. <laughs> Immortals sold poorly and Ascendant after releasing their first title. God, their game is- uh, The amount of colors and movement on the screen actually makes me want to hurl. Yeah, no wonder they failed. Had to lay off almost half of their staff. Six months later, the remaining employees were furloughed. A fancy word for, uh, maybe you have a job, IDK? And the company's future is uncertain. Sometimes memes can spit truth. I want shorter games with worse graphics made by people who are paid more to work less, and I'm not kidding. Immortals of Avium is a mistake that shouldn't have happened. And it's the exact type of reason why AAA publishers are sticking with familiar IPs and playing it safe. You guys I played the game Stray, and you can finish that game in six to seven hours, and at the end I cried because it was so cute, because I have a ginger cat, so I felt a lot. But the ending isn't even anything special, but it was an experience. Yeah, the kitty game? Yes, this, the little kitty game. I waited five years for that game, and I remember hearing about it on TikTok five years before it was released officially on Steam. And there were reviews that said stuff like, I wish there was more. I wish it had double the hours. And I'm like, I don't think I would have enjoyed it as much if it was like another six hours. Yeah, like it, it is not necessary for it to be like, it is a good cute game it has good responsiveness it has like a story that's not like convoluted it's about a freaking cat for god's sake i mean it's like just cute and it it, it it's just special like i'm gonna uh, I, like if you ever want to play a game that makes you feel like a cat like play that game it was cute and they put in a lot of effort into it too they had like tracking on cats and stuff the soundtrack was amazing the sound design was awesome yet we can't do that with 125 million dollars mm, curious in 9,000 people <laughs> does it overstay its welcome yeah exactly that too like yeah it has some like little flaws here and there but overall it was really good 
Call of Duty 26 to come out later this year? The bigger they are, the harder they fall. But why was Immortals, this random game, bloated with such a ridiculous budget and high expectations? Well, COVID-19 changed a lot of things. People bought a shitload of video games during that time, and mm -hmm. some upper management folk adjusted their business. They saw this as an opportunity to invest, invest, invest. So they expanded operations, hired more employees, but of course, the video game sales caused by the pandemic didn't last. And we're now seeing the fallout of that overexpansion. Uh, that's, this also happened with Blizzard. They thought that because WoW Classic was really successful that they could keep milking WoW Classic into like TBC, Wrath, Kata, when the dedication that people had during Classic WoW was also massively over, what is it called? Not overstimulated, like, um, over projected because of, because of COVID. Yeah. Fallout New Vegas. Yeah! 10,000 layoffs in 2023 and 8,000 more on the way. Over oh 30 Lord. studios were shut down. Several games canceled. 30. The hubris from corporate overlords has uprooted this industry in such terrible ways. Overloading teams with talented employees and a shit zillion dollars isn't some magical recipe for success. In fact, it puts the studio in a much more dire, stressful position because if the game doesn't sell well, they're fucked. Blockbuster game development costs are out of control. According to a study by the CMA, a single AAA game could have- I mean, that's kind of how it should be, though. If you fail, then that's kind of your own fault. There's a lot of indie games that had failed games before, and they tried their best to release another game, and, it's, and it becomes like a stellar phenomenon. Like a, like a stellar game. For example, uh, Pal World. Pal World, it had two really, like, really boring or like uninventive games that nobody likes but pal world it blew everything out of the water even with all the bugs and stuff and they said they were about to go bankrupt as well on pal world trying to release the game <laughs> development costs between 90 to 180 million dollars plus Holy 50 man. to 150 million for marketing that suicide squad game that 200 people are playing probably had an inflated budget. This is clearly mm -hmm. unsustainable. It's like every major AAA game is some massive live or die gamble. Naturally, companies want to mitigate and avoid all the risk they can. So again, they rely on established IPs and stick with what's familiar and most of all, safe. So wait a minute, Hackman. Helldivers isn't safe. <laughs> it literally makes fun of like, <laughs> <laughs> it makes fun of bugs, robots, and uh, nationalistic, like, borderline insane democracy related, like, uh, what is it called? Like, military corporatism, I guess. Not corporatism, I'm, I'm using the word. Like a, like a massive, oversized military for freedom. Yeah, democracy for freedom. Yeah, and it's amazing, and it's almost like a caricature of the military, like, uh, complex. Military industrial complex, yes. That's the word. <laughs> Filthy clankers, that's right. Safe investment is boring, exactly what a game shouldn't be. Yeah, exactly. And to top it off, um, a game like World of Warcraft also was extremely unpopular. Um, the idea of World of Warcraft as an MMO was extremely unpopular, but they pushed through and did it anyway. Yeah. There's a lot of games like that that weren't seen as something that was prospectful. Heavily influenced by Starship Troopers. Yeah, and I mean, again, it was influenced, but it doesn't mean they copied them. They just made their own idea and it was it was cool. You're telling me AAA games have become a greater risk, but also safer? That's a paradox, John. Think about <laughs> it this way. The bigger the budget, Corrected. the more employees working on a game, the more copies it needs to sell. Therefore, it has to appeal to a lower common denominator. They have to simplify and dumb down something. They cannot take risks. Or mm. I 
guess. Kind of. I I I kind of understand the viewpoint, but like classic vanilla in 2004 was quite literally the easiest MMO to play on the market and easy to understand. I guess I'm only I mean, I'm only talking about one game genre, so I guess I can't really say a game for everyone is a game for no one. Well, it's for everyone, but it's just also really shallow. If that makes sense. He's not saying it's actually is that way as much as how this view, suits view it. Well, that's what's the problem is that they wanted to appeal a massive broad audience. Big piss. Yo, yeet. Massive Thank you for tier one. It's generally true that these risk and games get punished by that's only because the AAA motherfuckers are betting every penny on these games. Yeah, and then they lose it all and they're like, Oh, well, guess nobody likes MMOs, huh, guys? Pack it up. Pack it up, you know? Like, that's why we haven't gotten an MMO again. Because we f they failed so many times. Like, New World failed in the end. Like, it could have been really good, but they failed because they... I don't know what I'm going to get into it. It was actually supposed to be a really cool game, and it, it didn't. Anyway, um, uh, what is it? Um, a bunch of other MMOs failed, like Blast Online! Like, every MMO under the sun has gone through it, but it's just... You need a lot of content. Uh, yeah, MMOs need a lot of content. There's a lot of, like, uh, network, uh, networking issues that can arise and ruin a game as well. Day one launches for a MMO are very, 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 very stressful. <laughs> what about Star Wars: The Old Old Republic? Yeah, that saw that that was that failed too. What? It failed massively. They didn't. It was it was very niche and also like really terrible. One of the biggest appeals of MMOs is online contact, speaking with people uh, from other countries. Now that it, from other countries that is so common, it's especially more. Yeah, that's also that's also true. Discord and Teamspeak and all those other uh, like networking on social media is also more common. Did it fail? I literally just said that and stop pinging me. I can read your messages. Yes, Star Wars The Old Republic failed massively. Old Republic was looked upon fondly at the time. Again, it, you look at it now and it has completely failed. It still gets updates? I don't know how, but they still are. I, I assume there's like a couple of thousand people playing it, but I wouldn't say it's very popular. Or experiment. They have to stick with what has proven to work. This is a huge reason why indie games such as Helldivers 2, Hades, Lethal Company are so much better at innovating on a popular formula or giving mm -hmm. us something brand new. Which mm -hmm. would you rather play? Back for Blood or Deep Rock Galactic? I better Dwarves! see some fucking rock and stone in the comments. But that's the thing. Back for Blood is a cheap imitation of what inspired it while Deep Rock Galactic- And it's also sanitized as hell. I remember my very first video that I ever made was was bitching about Back for Blood. And the characters were so bad. They were so sanitized and they didn't seem very relatable as well. Whereas with Left 4 Dead, the characters right from the get-go are very re relatable. That was your first video? Yeah, I, I watched a review on Back for Blood and I, I was just comparing it to Left 4 Dead and how it was horrible. ...is a unique twist on the whole four dumbasses trying to accomplish something co-op game. Deep Rock is brimming with charm, style, and this is gonna sound cheesy as fuck, but you can feel the love that went into it. I can't say the same with Back for Blood. No. What are some Cash other grab. examples that illustrate how games have gotten safe? Well, let me ask you this. Did you think for one millisecond that the Modern Warfare 3 remake was going to do the no Russian scene justice? Did you think no. it was going to be as shocking, if not more so? That's why I didn't. I also think that Command and Conquer Generals and uh, Zero Hour and all those games that 
were made before like 2012, before EA really went downhill, they should never remaster them. They they just wouldn't be able to recreate the charm of those games. And like or 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 having moments because they want it to be more sanitized. If they remake Red Alert, it will never be the same. It's crazy to me because it's like it, they have a car caricature of Japan imperialism and uh, the Russian uh, red wave. And it is quite literally a massive parody. And also the Americans obviously being like, you know, macho men and like with with women with massive tits and they're blonde. But like, that's the point. It's hilarious and it's funny and everyone thinks it's funny. But no people, they're scared of recreating that now in 2024 or whatever, because they don't want people to feel even like remotely offended by a caricature. It's so dumb. Oh, you terrorist. No. Yeah, it's problematic. <laughs> Woo! I remember I watched this um review by Hectman of COD and it was so bad. I could not believe my eyes. The ending where the guy dies, I was like. Man, that's such an insult. Oh, oh, give the writers a raise. Of course not. Like, even Call of Duty feels like it's been sterilized. But of course, there's some exceptions war, with, like, too. Cold War. I mean, that game took some serious risks with its campaign and story, and it paid off. Gamers love being surprised. We love being Boom. thrown for a loop. Because it's so hard to do now in the age of the internet and with all these leaks and everything. This is why Helldivers 2's live service is retaining so many players because there haven't been any roadmaps going into excruciating detail about what to expect. It's That's really nice as well. I really dislike um, when devs release everything. You can have hints of what's coming next, but having like full on like patch notes and like like this is what we're gonna do like like have a little bit of a surprise with, with like what's coming in the next few months it just i don't know it kind of ruins the game like looking forward to things like dead by daylight for example has a roadmap but then they also go into really really far out detail when they're like patching things weeks before the the actual patch drops and i'm like i don't know like i feel like you should I don't know, but DBD is shit. Yeah, but other games do that is what my point is. Yeah, other games do that because other games do that and then they see they have to do the same thing. Trickle feeds us hints through the universe and service announcements glorious. Yeah, exactly. That's why the redemption of No Man's Sky hit so hard because Sean and Hello Games just went into hibernation and came out when they had something to show people. When yeah. I say safe, I'm not just talking about the lack of innovation with game design, but also the writing. AAA franchises that used to go really hard with the dialogue now feel tame, like they're pulling punches. Sterile. I'm not a huge expert on Fallout, but... so Fallout fans, please correct me in the comments if I'm wrong. But there is a massive difference between Bethesda's Fallout games and the other Fallout games. In New Vegas, you can literally sell drugs to children. Like, like that's a real choice you <laughs> have in the game. That. You can be an absolute maniac. You can shake down a guy for caps and he'll say, well, you've taken everything but the clothes off my back. And then you can say, actually, give me your fucking clothes too. You know what I mean? <laughs> you cheap ass zombie. <laughs> like, for some reason, I just can't picture these types of things being in a new Fallout game. KOTOR 2 is also a fantastic example because I doubt we'll ever see a Star Wars game that takes the franchise in such a bold direction. God, I remember watching my brother play this. You can this. sell a child into slavery in Fallout 3. Yeah, because it was brutal. Fallout has a very brutal universe from Fallout 1, 2, 3. I feel like 4 was okay. Like, again, it wasn't amazing. It was all right. KOTOR 2 is a Star Wars game where the main villain wants to kill the force, destroy the force, like remove it from the universe, destroy the concept of Sith and Jedi completely. There's no way in Nar Shadda we'd ever witness a Star Wars game that delves into that sort of thing. According to Obsidian, Chris Avalon, one of the main writers for New Vegas and KOTOR 2, Obsidian made multiple proposals to develop spin-offs for Fallout and the Elder Scrolls, all of which were turned down by Bethesda. And while we can only no, really? Oh my God, man! No, we could have had a spin-off. <laughs> a 
imagine the reason why. I'm pissed Perhaps off it now. it was too risky in their eyes. Here's another example. Halo Wars 2. Console RTS. Pretty niche, but its expansion Awakening the Nightmare was the first time in a decade we saw the Flood in a Halo game. Why haven't the Flood appeared in the main series? Don't want to risk lowering the sales with an M rating, right? M rated yeah. games don't sell too great, do they? Speaking of Rockstar, God, this industry <laughs> pisses me off sometimes. L.A. Noir 2. Where is it? Bully 2. And you might think, well, isn't that hypocritical, Ackman? You were just complaining about these companies sticking to established IPs. But both of these franchises only have one game. And that's kind of my point. Instead of making one, you know, four- God, I remember when L.A. Noir came out, everybody played it. I remember watching Markiplier or PewDiePie play it. Really fun. Really fun to watch, too. 400 million dollar game. Why not cut a chunk of that out and develop multiple double-A games? What if they took one of these 150 million dollar triple-A budgets and made a couple of 20 million dollar bets with them, right? Oh my god, VTuber grows. Funded a bunch of projects, Disturbing. and the risk is much smaller. And I think that would be uh, a very good for the industry. And I wish AAA would take more risks like that with smaller teams. Then you would get that cohesion. You would get that. no. You th they would never do that. We they would never do that. That sort of singular vision, I think, and, and stronger creativity out of it. I at least understand this for Rockstar because their games are so overhyped. If they released a sequel that you thought was a 9 out of 10, that would feel disappointing. A bunch of Halo spin-offs were also pitched to leadership at 343, including an ODST-themed game similar to Helldivers 2. Uh, Imagine what could have been. I guess I just don't understand. A uh, Halo Helldivers? Dude, that would be so sick. That would be awesome. I'm so pissed at that. Yeah, no, For the imagine. For FF14 players. Remember it wasn't always as good as it is. 1.0 FF14 was so awful that it almost killed Square Enix. Yeah, and then they remade it. They played Cataclysm World of Warcraft and were like, alright, time to make a new game. <laughs> time to make a new game. <laughs> I'm not even joking. They made them they made them play Cataclysm back in like 2011 or 2010. Yeah. Yeah, to 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 teach them to know what an MMO actually means. Stand why the corporate side of game development treats every title like it has to be an all-in bet. Do you see what I'm getting at? So many of our favorite franchises that we grew to love because of how bold they were are now playing it safe. And they canceled uh, the StarCraft. Was it an FPS shooter? It was some sort of um, StarCraft themed game. Back in like 2010. Yeah, StarCraft Ghost. Yeah, that one. Yeah, they canceled that one. I was like, imagine what kind of cool stuff we could have had, man. Yeah, it was an FPS. Yeah, it's sad. Very sad. And that's why indie and double A gaming is thriving right now because they can take risks. They're not obsessing over how many people are going to buy the game. The developers of Power World were like, well, hope this doesn't make us go bankrupt. Indie studio. If Western developers were forced to play actually good games, they'd scream in front of their offices like lunatics. Or they could have fun and maybe learn and play the game because it's fun i don't get it why did you say that <laughs> I, I was about to say if you have if you have fun playing a good game wouldn't that be a wouldn't it be a good thing they wouldn't get mad not in this industry i don't know i'm more inclined that if you play a game and you have fun it's it's better than not playing a game and then making a game they're allergic to it. I don't believe that. I believe anyone can have fun playing a game. I could probably get my mom into Animal Crossing if I if I held her hand enough. Because Animal Crossing is a good game. Again, my mom's anti-gaming and all this shit, but if I if I had my way and I sat her down, I could probably get her to play because it's fun. Yeah, I don't know. I feel like it's very anti to think that people who don't play games who are in the industry 
are anti games. It's like, no, if, if, if they knew, they, maybe they would do a better job. My mom hated games that got her addicted to catching them all in Pokemon. Yeah, you can, you can find any way to, to do that. <laughs> Just find the right game. Studios are operating at the level that AAA used to. And when you don't have to make hundreds of millions of dollars to keep your company afloat and not fire your entire studio, mm -hmm. you can mm -hmm. take risks. And going back to my initial comparison between Arrowhead and Ubisoft, there's a huge difference in the mission statements of AAA and indie games. Baldur's Gate 3 is an indie game. Alarian is an independent studio, but the quality is so amazing, you do- And it was also a very niche type of genre game. I think they are referring to the devs who called out the makers of Baldur's Gate 3 and saying that gamers should manage expectations and saying we shouldn't expect something like that. Oh, like that? I mean, I guess, yeah, those people were completely wrong. Again, Baldur's Gate is a very, very niche genre because D&D games are not, like, super popular with gamers. They're, they're slow, they have a lot of storytelling, some people don't I'm like that. BG3 at this moment. My first playthrough, even Smugglana Punk. Nice. Those were other developers of other studios saying that. Yeah, yeah, I know what you're talking about because they were all like, oh, it's going to be overhyped. That's like, you're wrong. I played Divinity Original Sin 2 and I thought it was amazing. I knew they could do it. So I had no issue with it. So I don't care. <laughs> <laughs> Those guys can kick rocks. You'd assume it's AAA, right? There's this trend of indie developers reassuring customers that they're not going to nickel and dime us. No, there are no in-game purchases in our game. We believe in providing a complete and immersive gaming experience what? without the need for additional purchases. Vermintide 2 is one of the only games to do loot boxes right because they didn't sell them. At the height of the loot box craze, no less. Helldivers 2 doesn't let you pay for tiers in the freedom passes. Indie developers Bang. can afford to be more player friendly because they don't have these investors hanging over their heads and these massive aggressive monetizing because they have to make money of budgets you might think all these egregious microtransactions is just pure corporate greed and there's a good chance some of it is but it's also a safeguard like a necessity and i think the solution is just to make games smaller dude now a really shitty byproduct of this risk averse mentality is that a lot of these publishers are looking for a quick buck they want to make easy money so what do they do Bingo! Flood the market with shitty remasters. Boy, there's been an abundance of these lately. Oh my the Last God. of Us 1 on PC, GTA Trilogy. Oh, uh, Warcraft 3. Did you know they off, they sold off, not sold off, Um, I guess I should say, they shipped off Warcraft 3 to a Malaysian studio that's never done this type of thing before? Yeah, that was so sad to hear. I thought it was done by Blizzard, but it was like offshore to like Malaysia or something. To a studio that doesn't even do this kind of thing! Oh, shit. Here we go again. Ah! Hell, even Dark Souls Remastered sucked major ass. And don't even get me started on the fucking Battlefront collection. Oh, Did you yeah. know that at one point that Warcraft 3 Reforged had like three people working on it like one guy was supposed to remake all of the cutscenes, and this is so perplexing one guy These studios dump 10 figures into a new game but can't even hire 10 people to make a decent remaster it's, it's they really threw those people under the bus you have to understand the the it is the equivalent of taking the original halo franchise remastering and then shitting it out for people to be like wow we're remastering halo we're remastering Halo, but it's a pile of shit. That is what happened to Warcraft 3. Remastered, reforged, whatever. Warcraft made Blizzard. It made Blizzard. World of Warcraft came from it. Like, what? Like, I... It's like there's no middle ground. It's it's either it's no budget or uh, dump the bank account. Meanwhile, Lethal Company, made by one guy. Now, because one studios guide. are investing so much, they tend to interfere with the creative process to insane degrees. They see trends that are making money elsewhere, and they think, well, let's just throw that into our game. I'm funding this. What I say goes. Mm. Redfall lost 70% of its arcane staff during development, struggled the whole way. 
Development of Redfall began in 2018 as parent ZeniMax was quietly looking to sell itself and was encouraging its studios to create games as a service projects like Overwatch. Micro they saw Overwatch and were like, ah, yes, exactly. We should do it just like Overwatch. Why don't you just make a fucking good game? Ah! Transactions were intensely encouraged. However, the problems in trying to Disgusting. develop Redfall surfaced early. Firstly, management kept offering conflicting visions of what the game would and should be, resulting in developer confusion about what they were creating. How to reconcile single player and multiplayer within an arcane game was never really resolved either. Secondly, Arcane employed fewer than 100 people, which had been enough to make a single-player game, but was not a healthy number for developing a large multiplayer game with microtransactions to manage. A hundred people for a multiplayer, multi-million dollar budget. That's why Redfall sucked ass. Sourcing work to other studios was reportedly not enough to alleviate the strain. As a result of plummeting morale and lack of direction, veteran employees left the company in droves, with about 70% of the staff ultimately leaving Arcane. Redfall is not the only story of its kind. You can look at most AAA flops or AAA games that severely disappointed, and you'll Oh yeah, um, what was it called? Dead Island? That friggin' sucked too. Dead Island was awful. Find something similar. Management interfered. Management wanted this. I imagine they feel they have to micromanage these things, again because of the investment. Sometimes with AAA games, it feels like there's too many cooks in the kitchen. And Gordon Ramsay is pissed. What are you? An idiot, An idiot sandwich. sandwich. There's gotta be a happy middle ground in dev team size. Too small and you feel like the world rests on your shoulders. Too big and you feel like you have zero agency and influence. These big dev teams, especially when they're spread out against multiple studios across the country, can sometimes have very inefficient communication. Bureaucracy. Next Battlefield has the largest development team so far. One year later, former DICE dev says 2042 never stood much chance being great at launch. There's a video by Timothy Kane, the creator of the original Fallout, about game development caution. And he talks about how certain things in game- Oh, I watched this video. I watched this video and Asmongold reacted to it. It was crazy how much the game development sphere has changed it is insane he was talking i think maybe he'll bring it up maybe i should let him cook but he brought up like the how people dealt with making a game game development now that could be fixed in 45 minutes now take four weeks when we were yeah. making the Outer Worlds, this is the what I'm talking about. Combat AI wasn't really in yet, so I asked for a very simple combat aggression code to be added. This is how simple it was. Every time an NPC got shot, they would see if that person was on the list of someone who'd shot them. If they weren't, they'd add them to the list with the amount of damage they just took. If they were already on the list, they'd just add the amount of damage they took. Whenever they're deciding who to attack, they attack the person at the top of the list. That's it. That's all I wanted. The programmer who got signed to came to me and said, I need four weeks. And I'm like, why? Walk me through what you're going to do. And he goes, you don't understand. And I was like, I've coded this three times. Walk me through it. And he wouldn't. He left. He left angry. Lead programmer came back, started yelling at me, saying, if he says he needs four weeks, he needs four weeks. And I'm like, then I will do it. I'll have it done before lunch. And he said, no, because then people will have to support your code. I'm like, I'm going to walk you through what I want. And you tell me why this takes four weeks. He looked at what I wrote, which was about 10 lines of pseudo code on a whiteboard. And he goes, I'll come back. He came back about an hour later and said, what about two weeks? And I said, do I have any options here? Fine. Two weeks. You want to fix these? That shit blew my mind and I don't know anything about coding. Why does it take you four weeks to make that? Ten lines of code! What? This is why it takes so long. It, this is why it took seven years for Starfield to be made half-assed. Great tape, nothing more. I don't understand. I don't understand why. Because bureaucracy? Bureaucracy can suck my ass. <laughs> they have to goon after each line of code. <laughs> 10 lines of pseudo is a bit more in actual code. 
Yeah, the guy said I would have it done by this afternoon, so it would take him a whole day, right? Like, I understand. I don't know anything about Cody. He said 10 lines of pseudocode. He said it would take him an entire day. That's still more reasonable than four freaking weeks. Two weeks. That's still too much. That's insane. <laughs> like, what the hell? And this is probably why it takes so long to fix mistakes as well. Because you have to talk to so many people and then go through so much red tape to talk to people to fix something. They get paid by the hour? I don't think that's why. I think it's all, like, communication and having so many people on staff. That's why. These lines of code? That decision has to go through 10 fucking departments now. It needs to be yeah. approved by your manager, by your manager's manager. It has to go through the marketing team, the DEI office, mm. the fucking janitor's cousin has to approve it. <laughs> Indie developers don't have the same level of bureaucracy. I imagine if there's a problem with the code, you could just walk over to the cubicle of Jimbo and ask him about it without the fucking HR department breathing down your neck. And you also have to make games that can be- And now this is a PR disaster- well, not a PR disaster, an HR disaster because the guy got mad at the guy that we just saw in the video saying that, like, it's gonna take me, like, three- like, an entire afternoon to do it, but I will get it done, and now he has to deal with the fucking human resources person saying that, and it's like, boo-hoo, it makes me upset. <laughs> oh my gosh released in china you need that china money it has to hit certain quotas and scores on diversity oh yeah, that equity too. and inclusion to secure funding and the game needs to have microtransactions for this consistent revenue source a live service business model so that makes the investors happy and can you see how creativity dies in this environment when games yeah. are made by committee and not creativity it also seems like the more employees a company has the easier it is for you to blend in and not be seen or heard. Indie studios typically have better working conditions with flexible hours. Employees have more creative control. Smaller teams allow the individual to have more influence on a game and a greater impact. And you also don't have to have to respond to like, <laughs> you know, three different emails from three different people. Miscommunication is also very common with massive Massive corporations. What does a chart have to do with game development? I, I mean, it's just a, it's a headache. It, it's a headache. That's why. I've seen a lot of articles from ex developers who say this game wasn't what we intended to make. It wasn't what we envisioned. Disagreements are going to spring up in game development, but it's easier to settle an argument between two people than it is a hundred. At yeah. the end of the day, indie gaming has risen where AAA has fallen. The decline of AAA gaming is due to the insane budgets, scope, and ex HR is literally Satan. Take it from somebody with an office job. My brother had a degree in public relations, and like it has its good notes, but it's mostly just it, it is mostly bad. It has its good uses, but mostly bad, mostly annoying. Expectations of these games, how that affects the employees, the work environment, the investors and higher ups who have to constantly micromanage these games and throw in their own ideas when they have no fucking clue what makes a good video game. I feel like a lot of these developers simply don't have the same luxuries and freedom to- This is HR. Get back to work. I'm trying! Create art like they used to. Game development in the AAA process, where simple solutions to bugs can take weeks, where the freedom to express and create art and take risks is suppressed in favor of creating the generic and the safe. Too many external factors have disrupted what used to be a creative process with the singular goal of making the best and most fun video game possible. It ain't about that no more. And made by nerds, lest we forget. Nerds don't make video games anymore, or it's very rare. This shit has to make money, and a lot of it. And it's for all these reasons that AAA gaming is declining, and why indie titles are thriving. But what do you think? What are some of your favorite indie games? Let me know your thoughts and opinions in the comments below. Don't forget to join my public Discord mm -hmm. server. Mm -hmm. Links in the mm -hmm. pinned comment and the mm -hmm. description. Thank you all for watching. Hope you enjoyed the video. Leave a like if you did, and subscribe to The Act Man for more awesome content. 
All right, everyone, that's all I got for today. This is the Act Man signing out. Peace. Thank you. Great video. It was actually different from all the other uh, AAA bad, you know. It had a little bit of a positive note. Yeah. Yeah. Nice video. Give it a like. Subscribe to Mr. Act Man. Oh, yeah.